before we start messing around in the studio, I want to show you the flowers I've planted. I'll take you outside too, maybe, and show you what's happening, the hellebore, and I've got some things that I want to plant, hopefully this week before the rain comes. All right, so let me plug you in here in my overhead. I've got my tea, and plug in my little microphone, which I think the quality of the sound's a little better than the iPhone. There we go. So what I thought I'd do is, you know, I've got these Neocolor crayons, which I talk about a lot and use a lot. There's the Neocolor 2, which is mostly what's in this box. But I also have some Neocolor 1s. What's the difference, you say? Great question. The 1s are waxy. They're not um, water-based. So I'll show you the difference here in a second. But I've been acquiring more of the ones, the waxy ones. We could call them waxy ones and watercolor twos. They say aquarel and the twos. So I'll show you the difference. And I'm still kind of learning what to do with the ones that resist but I've found some interesting techniques. So let's play with that. And then I want to look at, because these are really expensive, and I just thought I'd order these from, these are from on Amazon, and see how they compare. Because, you know, they're less, and if you want to use them a lot. Um, so let's, we'll see. But first I'll show you the... Neo color. These are made by Caran Dash, which is a Swiss company. And they are delicious. Okay, let's play. And then we can, once I show you what they do, we can maybe play with some in the sketchbook on some pieces. But let's just for now use this. Uh, use a watercolor scrap here. All right, so the regular Neocolor 2s, if you're not familiar with them, you can just use them like this as some texture, um, but they're also dissolvable by water, with water. So I can, you know, I've traveled before and you can use them as paints almost, You depending on how much you disturb the The crayon. Once you, you can just do that much. You can do, um, you know, a line and then kind of just disturb it a little bit. So you could do like a flower, and you can mix colors. So you wanted to do that with a little bit of this. Then let me get a smaller brush. You do something like this and let the have that effect. And then you could you know, have a stem coming down. And add some more water or not. You could do crayon on wet, creates an interesting effect. Probably can't see it so much with that. You know what? This might be a yeah. Did you see how this this is a uh, this is a one? It's not dissolving. So let me find the two in that color, and you'll see the difference. Yeah, here it is. I knew because I, I was like, wait a minute, that never dissolved there. So there's the Neo Color 2. So you're seeing the, the difference right there between the wax resist and the watercolor one. 
Let me get a bigger piece of paper. Let's see, watercolor paper. Only have about 16 um, pads of it. Every time it's on sale or something, I get a bunch. So um, let's look at other ways. So one of the things you can do with the neo colors, I need to start separating the twos and the ones, is I use them on top of paint all the time. So for example, um, I, I use them under paint too. So let me start with under paint. So you can do you know something like this and then you can take gesso or white paint. Gesso is a surface primer and it seals the paper. So right now this is watercolor paper. It's not sealed, meaning when I put paint, water, anything, it's gonna soak into the paper. But if I use some gesso and prime all of it or parts of it, that sort of seals it. Um, also think of it, it's in this case, I'm using it a little bit like white acrylic paint. Uh, it's just cheaper, frankly, and I like how chalky it is. Um, almost like a, an acrylic gouache. So I'll just prime this one section. We'll let it dry so you can see the difference. But you can come in here with the white, again, paint or gesso, and you can get some interesting effects by painting over these neocolor crayons. You know, it kind of brings color to it. So technically, you could travel and just take your crayons and some white paint, or just maybe three colors of paint, and get some interesting backgrounds. Or paintings. Now, if I try that with the, whoops, that's my gesso area, with the waxy ones, it will do the same thing because of the, it's, the gesso is acrylic, it, it'll cover it. But, so that's really not, there's not much of a difference there. It, the gesso disturbs the waxiness. But if I use water, we already saw that you get different effect. I've also found that for some reason if I take the orange and maybe it's just because it's a brighter color this is the waxy one we'll call it to help us remember waxy one <laughs> um, so let's say I take some let's try some fluorescent pink because why not Have you noticed that fluorescent paints stink? Strange. So you can do something fun where... Let me make sure the camera's getting this. Yeah. Okay. Good. I want you guys out of the loop. Um, where your lines, you know, they stay there because it's the waxy one. And you can do some big old flower like this and that becomes the center. Let's try a little bit of wet on with the wax. I just bought this waxy one um, gold, metallic gold. The crayons end up showing up just sort of green, greenish. Yeah, on top of water, it's not metallic y. That's a little, there's a teeny bit of a shimmer. Okay. 
Somebody out there probably knows why the fluorescents are stinky. It's got to be something to do with the source of the color. All right, so there you're seeing the waxy ones versus the watercolor ones. Um, let's paint on top of them. Now I also use them on top of paint. So we'll, I go through sometimes some spreads that I've done that may need a little something something like this. Um, actually, it's fine the way it is, but so that I can show you, let's add some. Now, if I'm going on top, whether I use the waxy, the number one, or the number two, doesn't really matter, except that was the waxy one. I can't really remove it. Um, if I don't like what I did with the watercolory one, you know, you can't scrape it like an oil pastel. A little bit, but it's mostly just blending it. Um, if I don't like what I've done with the watercolor ones, I could wet it and remove it. But it depends on what I've painted on. If I've painting on watercolor or regular gouache, then I'll end up removing that too. So you just kind of have to know what your, I think we need more of a dark color in there. So let's play maybe with this. Just give a little definition. I like this better. So here's an example where I'm using them on top. I do like that bit of definition, but I think I'm going to go with my navy, which kind of is here. Don't want to do too much. Just a little something, and let's see. A little more definition to some of these centers. And I could use paint too, of course. But it just adds a bit of a different texture and lets in some of that white, which I like. Would have been fine to leave it. Maybe even better. These are pretty, these blue ones, aren't they? I'm gonna leave the white there. I'll do a little, couple little more of these to tie it together. And let's look at how we can remove um, smaller brush. Let's remove, since it was watercolor, see if we can remove that navy from there. Actually, I liked it when it when it got wet, gave kind of the darkness I was looking at, looking for without too much the intensity. Just another way I use them, you can do a line and then come through here if you want it to look less cranny and more, depends on how, the look you want. There's just endless possibilities, really. Um, all right, so let's test out these Sargent brand. Right, so the first thing I noticed is the way they come. They don't come with a point on them. The Neocolor brand new has a bit of a point on it, but these come with this blunt end. So I went ahead and used a regular sharpener. I have just, you know, just one of these and I sharpened this one. So let's sharpen a couple more. so we can test them out. They sharpen pretty easily. You can actually save these, this goes for the nail colors, save all these shavings, and well, let's just do it. And that's basically watercolor paint. We'll see how it works with the Sargent. You can use them. It's uh, where'd my little brush go? Here you are. Let 
Yeah, that's a nice pigment on that sergeant. If you didn't want the, you know, clumps of paint, you could put it on your palette and dissolve it first. I just wanted to show you how that works. They should dissolve completely. But that's a pretty color. Of course, this is working its way into a flower shape. Because why not? <laughs> All right, and then here it is. Oh, interesting. It's not really writing. Well, that's a difference because how I'm pretty sure the neo color. This is the neo color. Would make a mark. Well, okay. No, I guess not because it's still wet. All right, so let's see how it works. With the gesso on top like we did here. So we're comparing same things. Okay, that works. So far, pretty good test. Okay, so here, let's compare color to color because that'll, I think, help us really evaluate at least. Of course, all it really does is help us evaluate this particular color because they could be different. And this is the sergeant. There's definitely, as I'm writing, a different feel. This feels, maybe you can hear it, a little bit rough, more rough. This feels, you hear it doesn't make as much noise, more creamy. But this pigment is brighter. So let's see what happens when we add water now. I would say more intense pigment here probably on the Neo. I don't know, hard to say. Let's try another color. Um, let's see here. Let's try a blue compared to this blue. They're different blues, but I don't think I have this blue in the Neo color. Now let's try, okay, let's try the Prussian blue with the I don't know what this did I call it. Oh, it is Prussian blue. Okay, so that's a good match. First, we'll have to sharpen. I'm supposed to get some rain tomorrow, so I want to get my stuff planted. I've taken these shavings before and just like put them all on a plate and, you know, use them, like I said, as watercolor. Okay, so, new color over here. Listen to the difference. Oh, now that didn't, interesting. That one doesn't feel like as much of a difference. Hmm, so different colors maybe feel different. Okay, let's do the Neo, very colorful. You can say a little less intense of a pigment, but I have to say these, you know, I don't, I wouldn't want someone to 
you know, if they're going to budget to say, well, you know, I have to buy the Neo Colors so far. Let's let's continue and see. I want to see how it does with this. So this is where I would put water over something. Let's say maybe some leaves. Okay, let's try the same thing with the Neo Color. that they behaved pretty much the same there I would say I think we can see that the neos have sort of diffused maybe I maybe I didn't disturb these as much I don't know you can diffuse the color whoops <laughs> now I made it purple diffuse the color by disturbing it but I do think you can see the crayon marks more, but in, the, in my case, I really don't use them this way too much. I use them more on top of things, so um, it doesn't matter to me. Well, let's use the sergeants and do some, see where I want something. I think maybe a dark orange highlight is what this, this one needs. This is a scarlet. Let's try this orange. Got to do some sharpening. That adds a little oomph. So far I'm not seeing a reason not to like these. I probably should have <laughs> remembered how much they were. Um, the Neo Colors I know are about two dollars a piece. Two, two thirty, something like that. Uh, individually. And then there's a set several sets that can get up into the hundreds, you know, lots and lots of colors. I don't, I don't have those. Um, and these sergeants, eh, I want to say this set of 24. Okay, let me just look at it real quick. I think it was like 20 something dollars. But just give me a second. Because I just arrived and I looked at several brands before I chose this one that had the, the highest, yeah, 2488, that's with tax, so low 20s. I looked at several with the reviews. Let's see if I don't need to sharpen this, but I can just use the corner until. And while we have the fluorescent out, I think. I just want to do another. Bit of that there for some pop. Do they have a lime color here? Oh, this olive color looks pretty. Let's see if what that does if I put it in there and then wet it. 
Yeah, it gives a bit of a... And don't forget you can mix. Um, so let's say I want more of a limey color there. I'm using, whoops, I'm using the sergeants now. I'm going to keep using them until I can get more of a feel for them for you guys and see if I see any potential negatives. I can get you can mix colors to my point so in that case I'm just brightening up the greens here a little bit on some of these leaves I don't even need to wet it so that's working well Use them anywhere else. See if anything in here needs a little something, something. Maybe here. Um, I guess there's not a turquoise. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Might have to get this set and then order your turquoise neo color because there's a light blue, a cobalt. Let me keep these in here so that I'm not getting too confused. The rose pink. The salmon pink is pretty though. Let's just look at all these colors. And there's the navy. This might not show up, this salmon. Yeah. It's interesting though because I do think, let me try to get the same color, I do think this Neo color would show up. Well this apricot is lighter, but let's just imagine this. Yeah, that is interesting. You want the color to be able to show up on gouache. Oh, maybe this is just too dark. Let's try a, a light one just for kicks. Okay, it does show up. Well, the Neo color are more creamy, but in a pinch, these work. Well, I shouldn't say in a pinch because, let's see here. Let's do some more testing. I want to make sure that a light, well there's only a couple of light colors, this ochre. And I want to also get the kind of hard edge off it. I want to see if it will show up on a darker, I'm kind of running out of places to try it. It's not really dark. Let's try another. Okay, yeah, that shows up nicely. I like that. Where else would I want to add that? Just a little bit of texture. That's, you can see I did that. Well, that might be oil pastel. I kind of go back and forth. They're just not as creamy feeling, but they they do the trick. All right. Well, I think I've given that a sufficient review for you to make a decision. Um, I kind of feel like working on something though. Oh, I could add something to this. And this, this was, I have to do another video on this. I bought those. A little watercolor crystal dust 
Yeah, I'll do a video on that. That was fun. Oh, and this, I was, um, I love rugs, you know, tribal rugs. And so I, this was inspired by one of those rugs. This is gouache and acro gouache, maybe some acrylic. I'm looking at it now, I wonder if I want to do a little detail with this. It's not brown, what is this? Russet. That's cute. So this is kind of how I, um, depends on how much time I have in a, in a day to create. Uh, if I'm going to work on something you know, on a painting, like that's, you know, going to be sold, then I might warm up like this in my sketchbook, going through it, seeing where I want to add something. Kind of messing around. Um... Also, I can get ideas that way. I switched to the Neo color. I can switch back. I think there's a dark poker. Yeah. This is the sergeant. Yeah, so I'll just kind of mess around and um, even if I only have 15 minutes or something, I can open up a sketchbook and play with something, get a little bit of creative time in. Oh, it just broke. That is what the Neo Colors do really easily. That's why I have a box of broken ones. So. I guess they're similar in that regard. This was acrylic and acrylic wash. You can tell the acrylic because there's a bit of a gloss to it. Let's see what else would I want to do. I want to keep this one relatively simple, but I think Let's see how this white works to lighten this up a little bit. Just a little. This is the metallic gold um, neo color because I don't. The sergeant doesn't have a metallic gold. And again, it's going to look, I usually grab it when I'm just wanting to do some green with maybe a little pop. You might barely be able to see this. This was that first color we tested, wasn't it? Let's see. I'm just adding a little dimension to some of these. Playing around, really. I do like how this turned out, though. Well, let's see.
Hmm, I could add something to these. I keep grabbing the neo colors. So the feel is definitely more I'm the, interesting. I didn't expect the, that I'm noticing that the difference, the biggest difference I'm noticing is not really in the performance, it's in the feel. They just don't feel as creamy going on, but the result, they look, they look good. Let's switch to the uh, poker here. This is the perfect kind of exercise for crayons like this, or colored pencil, or Posca pen, <laughs> all the different tools I like because these little sketches, which I did with a limited palette, and I wrote the um, brand, it looks like, Royal Talons gouache, and then the color inspiration, it looks like I got from the Flower Color Theory book. Um, which is a great book. I'm going to do a video on one of my favorite books, but let me show you this. Flower Color Theory. Fantastic little book. Um, so let's see if that's what I did. 224. Because I use this for color and also for um, yeah, there it is. That was the palette that I was picking. Yeah. It's funny, I don't normally, I'm normally not very good about <laughs> records of any kind. Oh, that's so funny. Every now and then you surprise yourself. What I really want, and haven't found, so let me know if you have, is a fluorescent crayon. So I end up, um, I did, have found a fluorescent colored pencil by Prismacolor. Let's see, sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, it'll add a little... You might not be able to see it from there, but just a little bit of a, hello. I feel like it says, hello, a highlight, really. Right on that orange. I'll just put a few for highlights and go back to this. The paper keeps sliding on these, which is interesting. So I guess it's going to come right off. The Neo Color paper, it has these little pull things, whereas you use more up you can peel some back, but like I said, most of them end up breaking anyway. You can see here I've peeled that back. Paper kind of stuck on there. Um, but it looks like with these sergeants, probably going to lose the paper. It wants to keep sliding off, so we'll just get rid of it. And maybe if you don't hold them as hard as I do, or as press as hard, they won't break. Yellow ochre is a nice color in the Sargent's. Okay, yeah, that showed up uh, on the darker color. I'm glad I flipped to this page. This is this needed a little something something. Hmm. 
And you can't see these at all. Let's see here. Let's try this salmon. See, there's another paper it keeps trying to slide. Let me try the Neo Color Salmon. Shows up better. It's a lighter color. All right, my dears, I'm gonna go out to the garden and get some stuff planted. Um, and then and I'm gonna add, I don't know if I'll do this, maybe I won't do a garden video yet. Let me get some more stuff planted and then I'll show you some of the stuff I'm planting. Put the crayons down, Suzanne. <laughs> Put them down. <laughs> okay, wait, one more thing, because I think this would look good with, like it turned into a little plant instead of. <laughs> All right, put it down. It's, I put it down. Okay, go create. Love sharing this stuff with you guys. See you next time.